Assalamu alaikum uh, to all of our viewers. If you're watching this live or at a pre-record or at a after recorded time, um, we here at Unpack want to say uh, welcome, 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 as always, um, uh, to another segment of Coping in Quarantine. We have an incredibly informative show for you all today. Um, but before, I want to be the first and foremost to wish all of those celebrating Ramadan a happy and hearty Ramadan Mubarak. Um, I know for many of us, this Ramadan will be unlike any other. Um, due to COVID, many of us will not be participating in, in many of our traditions, you know, going to Tarawih and, and being at large iftars. Um, but we here at MPAC want to be the first to say that we stand in solidarity with the sacrifices um, the Muslim American community is making in regards to COVID. Um, you know, we see Muslim Americans not only on the front lines in, in the healthcare field um, as essential workers, but now even with our normal festivities, making the, the conscious and wise decision to stay home is one of the is one of the biggest commitments that we can make um, as a, as an ummah. So I commend you on that. Um, but I want to to go ahead and get the ball rolling with our fantastic webinar today, which is being hosted um, by Unpack, and and we brought on our guests from Access. We have Mr. Hassan Jabbar and Nahla Kaili, um, who will who will be our guests today. And I will pass the the mic over to Mr. Salamo Mariati, our president. To, to get the show going. Thank you, thank you, Iman, and, and Ramadan Mubarak to everybody, and we thank you for, for joining us on uh, one of the more important conversations we're gonna have today with two heroes of mine, unsung heroes, uh, but when we talk about the front lines, social services is front and center in terms of not, you know, in the past it was called uh, a safety net. Now it, it, is, it is that line between that, that is holding us between uh, a healthy society and a broken one. And they, uh, these two people, individuals, have mastered the skill uh, of fixing what's broken in families, um, which is the functional unit of society. And I see that as the most important contribution that Islam can make to any society. So uh, Hassan Jabber and uh, Nahla Kayali from uh, Access, they are involved in social services for the community, uh, from counseling to job training, to computer skills, to you name it. Uh, they do it in lifting uh, uh, up people and developing them so that they can be uh, trained to, to, to enter uh, the, the work field and, and enter back to their families in re reunification when reunification is necessary. Uh, so I just wanna ask both of you uh, who have been serving communities that have been heavily impacted by the coronavirus, what initiatives have you developed or are continuing to pursue during this time? We'll start with uh, Hassan. So first, uh, thank you, so very much uh, salam and ramadan mubarak to you to nahla to impact and your members and to the entire muslim community uh, in the u.s uh, uh, thank you for uh, this initiative and it's always always wonderful to see nahla and be part of um, nahla's team uh, so um you started Salam with something that uh, uh, really on my mind um, uh, recently, especially with this crisis, uh, which is how, in fact, um, how badly uh, deteriorated uh, the social safety net here in the in the U.S. Uh, and uh, how much more than ever we need to uh, think about putting people first uh, and, and do the best we could do as a society to make sure that people are cared for, uh, to make sure that people have jobs, to make sure that we live in a clean environment, to make sure that uh, children are being educated. Uh, uh, and to make sure that there is fairness and equity in everything we do on a daily basis. Uh, 
I, I guess you know that um, um, access has been served in our community for the past 49 years now. We're going on 50 years. So we see on a yearly basis 70,000 people. Uh, we uh, offer 120 uh, programs. Uh, they, they cover the whole range of economic, social, health, mental health. Uh, education after schools um, and and uh, uh, f uh, this crisis was and continues to be a very challenging one for us so, uh, the first challenge for us is how to keep 500 employees safe uh, and how we make sure that had that we are protecting the people who are supposed to be caring for others. So, uh, and, and second is how do we quickly adapt to the new reality, the new crisis, the new situation. I was very proud to see that after the governor of Michigan uh, issued an order to stay home. So, uh, that we were able in less than 10, ten days to uh, move all of our services to remote services. We continue to serve the 70,000 people uh, and we continue to provide 120 programs, but we were able with technology to move to remote operation. Uh, and uh, and then we asked ourselves, um, what role can we play now in serving our community? What is what are the priorities out there in the community, and how do we find an additional resources and energy in us to respond to these needs? Um, so we struggled in the beginning, um, especially our clinic and finding out how we can have uh, 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 testing uh, in, in the community uh, uh, of people who might be carrying the virus. So, uh, and, you know, everywhere, uh, this, can, this was an issue uh, in terms of uh, uh, testing people who need to be tested for the virus. Um, and continues to be unfortunately an issue, but we uh, uh, we made um, a partnership between Access and Wayne State University Medical School, and we were able to set up two um, uh, testing sites. Uh, these are drive th drive through testing sites. And uh, we focused on first responders uh, who needed to be tested. I'm happy to say that now we move to a mobile testing clinics and we are sending these uh, mobile clinics to, uh, to detention centers, to police departments, to uh, fire departments. Uh, we are sending them all over the state of Michigan so far we were able to test almost 4,000 people and we were able to find 40 percent testing negative so they can go back to the hospitals and go back to their jobs protecting people so we're very proud that access took a lead in the state of michigan on, on this testing this very challenging testing issue uh, going on in the community. We also initiated uh, um, uh, in, in Michigan, Salem, 82% uh, of students are on, uh, on the school lunch program. Uh, so if they're not in school, they can't uh, get food, um, can't get lunches. So. So we organize uh, a, a, again packaged food. We had uh, local restaurants um, uh, uh, participate in this program, packaging food, and we've we've seen 
thousands and thousands of uh, students and their families driving by will give them the package food and and uh, and make sure that they have food at home and, it's wonderful. and yeah, yeah. Finally, we, we in Michigan, um, as of yesterday, one million people are out of jobs. So, so uh, we are gearing up to make sure that uh, people in, in need of help filing for unemployment or knowing what to do next um, are being taken care. Of. So these are the three areas that we are focusing on in addition to the daily services that we continue to provide. Thank you. Uh, th th that you've just outlined exactly what we mean by you know th this is an untold story of how mm -hmm. uh, organizations like Access are holding the line in, in preserving our society and, and and social health and public health. So thank you for outlining all of that. Nahla, you're here. Uh, I, Hassan, you're you're in Detroit uh, or, or Dearborn, uh, and. Uh, Nahla, you're, you're here in, in California, in Anaheim. Uh, tell us uh, how, how Access California is, is, is holding up and, and what, what, we, what we can learn from you uh, as far as the services that you're, you're providing uh, at this time. Uh, thank you, Salam, for inviting me to be part of this uh, uh, seminar. And uh, Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. Good to see you, Mahari. Hassan. Uh, and uh, MPAC is doing an amazing job of bringing the community together. Uh, here at Access California Services, we are committed to our mission of serving the underserved community with a focus on Arab American and the Muslim community. We have a mission to serve humanity and we are proud to say each and every one of our team, whether a board member, staff, volunteers, are committed to serve humanity. Um, in the past uh, month, and that's why we are an essential organization, so our door is still open to the community. We're doing a lot of services uh, virtual uh, and over uh, the phone, but we're still serving um, more than we used to um, uh, serve in the past of uh, community members. And we start seeing community that we've never seen before. They start coming to our office and uh, we're heavily, you know, serving with uh, unemployment services. We, on a daily basis, we do between 70 to 100 applications. And our staff is really committed uh, we'll start seeing most of uh, the community members who are applying for unemployment now, they are eligible for Medi-Cal, which is the CHIP program in, in nationally. But here in California, it's the Medi-Cal Covered California, which is the Affordable Care Act. Now we're switching people from different program to um, the CHIP program. Um, our elderly program is, uh, is going really, really good because we are checking on our elderly in the program on a daily basis. Uh, we check on them. We have uh, clients that uh, uh, they're coming for financial assistance and uh, mashallah, our community are so generous. We're receiving a lot of uh, uh, support from the community to help with rental assistance, motel vouchers, food vouchers, food vouchers going by amazing uh, amount of uh, uh, numbers of uh, food vouchers on a daily basis. People are uh, going through a, a really critical time at, uh, right now. And our team is uh, serving um, the community. We're, uh, our office still open eight to five every day to, of serving. Our classes, we moved our classes virtual, which is the ESL uh, citizenship classes. Uh, um, we're doing uh, all our classes online right now through Zoom. And uh, our uh, community are, um, alhamdulillah, staying safe. And uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, good support uh, for uh, the community but our program is still running as usual. 
You know, we're, we're seeing a growing resistance to stay-at-home orders, as, as many are untrusting of government officials. However, what many people do trust is their local community leaders and community-based organizations like ACCESS. So have you been promoting measures to keep your communities educated on how to, sit, to, uh, to stay safe and, and keep others safe? Well, um, uh, Access California Services is a trusted agency. So we keep uh, do, putting messages to the community to how to stay safe and stay home and obey with the uh, rules and regulations that's coming out of you know, the government. And uh, when messages come out from Access California Services, people they trust. And alhamdulillah, we have been doing really great work uh, to ask the community to stay home. And uh, we've been doing uh, a lot of, um, uh, we did um, a um, infograph and we put it on our Facebook, well, social media, website, how to take care of uh, themselves while they're uh, in home. We're gonna start a series of uh, support to the community, whether it's um, uh, parents, uh, youth, children. Uh, we're starting this week and our mental health team are working on it right now. Uh, it's gonna be great, but we've been collaborating with other organization and government agencies to put messages out and uh, we've been taking that uh, line to do all the messages in Arabic for the community. And uh, we, we collaborated with other ethnic uh, community to put messages in different languages. And, and tell us more about the mental health and youth programming for both uh, Hassan and Nahla. Hassan, can you tell us more, more about it in terms of what you do? We hear a lot about the need for more PPEs and protective yeah. personal equipment and, uh, and uh, uh, ventilators and, and other medical equipment. But what about the, the social services that's needed and, and how I, access has been instrumental in that? Yeah, just let me say, uh, uh, Nahla um, talked about trusted voices uh, and she's absolutely correct that Unfortunately, the messages coming from the federal government is, is conflicted messages and, and uh, frankly, not very helpful in terms, of, uh, in terms of making sure that the federal government is providing useful and, and, and uh, providing confidence in what's coming from, from the federal government. Uh, the, what we are seeing now uh, that, and we are tracking these numbers, uh, that uh, um, uh, we've seen 40% uh, demand on uh, mental health services. Um, and it's mainly people who are um, worried about uh, um, the situation, confused about the situation. Uh, a lot of people that are uh, in fear of losing jobs um, or, uh, uh, or figuring out how they're going to survive uh, economically. Uh, we have uh, uh, we've seen uh, a much higher level of anxiety in the, in the community. So mental health is going to be uh, one of the major challenges for us going on from here. In addition, obviously, to uh, jobs and economic and uh, uh, remember, um, Arab Americans are very active in small business. Um, uh, we have in, in the Detroit area, 25,000 businesses, uh, small businesses owned by Arab Americans. Most of these are family businesses and now being shut down and they've been shut down for uh, and uh, these, uh, uh, the, these people are also suffering that uh, all of this um, is going to translate itself into more people in need of help, yeah. more people in need of services. I would, uh, um, uh, I would say that mental health and economic 
support are going to be the two top priorities for us. I agree with Hassan because we still uh, we start seeing an increase of phone calls. Uh, community members are asking for uh, uh, mental health uh, sessions, and we're doing it um, over the phone. And many of the clients that we've never seen before, and employment services is the second top uh, priority right now for the community to find them job, because what they're receiving from government right now, it's not enough for the family. And we start seeing a lot of uh, community members who are suffering from anxiety, depression, uh, there's domestic violence is increasing right now. And uh, they don't know what the, uh, they expect. Uh, they are in the unknown. They don't know what's gonna happen with them tomorrow. Uh, uh, immigration services, they don't know what's going to happen with their uh, applications for family members, especially with the refugees. They were, many of them in the pipeline are waiting for family members to arrive. Um, the community are, um, right now they're living uh, in, in between rocks that they don't know what's going to happen with them tomorrow and if they are securing any jobs, uh, food, uh, how they're going to be able to pay for the rent. Uh, it's, it's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of anxiety in the community. Um, as, as, a, as a whole, it's, uh, and we always try to um, let them know that we're all together in it and we're supporting. Alhamdulillah, we're getting a, a really a great support from the community to help them with financially. Uh, on a daily basis, we've been writing checks, a big amount of checks for the rent and uh, food vouchers. And yesterday we had a um, um, drive-through um, uh, food drive. Uh, it was amazing. Even the city of Anaheim are talking about it today. Uh, the chief of police sent us a thank you letter this morning. Uh, it was one of the largest in the city of Anaheim. The line were about five miles down uh, waiting for food. We served over 2,500 people yesterday. We had over 130 volunteers, uh, all walk of life. People, they came to us and we had a line special for the homeless population because if they don't have a car, we serve them. And we had amazing donors from big companies that they donated the food yesterday. We had about over 25 pallets of food. It's amazing. Um, you know, we have a, can, you know, in, in terms of dealing with COVID-19 and COVID-19 legislation, MPAC has started a human security campaign. And human security is, is the security of the, of the masses, of the people. National security is about the security of the state. You cannot have national security without human security. And, uh, and in many ways, I, I love, by the way, what Hassan said, putting people first. That should be central to our policy right now. And I think that's exactly the encapsulation of human security. Uh, and one of the legislative uh, initiatives MPAC is undertaking is to empower and fund community clinics and community centers and access fits that perfectly. Um, how can we help you do that more? How can we advocate uh, for access, uh, not just in policy, but in, in the community and in, 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 you know, in regional uh, governments so that we can work with others to, to do exactly what you were talking about is to focus on the areas where already there is trust with the community and with the people while the federal government is unfortunately losing trust, how can we get that message across? How can we work together to expedite this legislative initiative? Uh, first, uh, Salam, thank you for your leadership on, on this because at the end, uh, Nahla and I and uh, other like us, uh, we can, we can do this much, but much more needs to be done. 
um, I, I think we, we need to um, reorder our priorities in, in this society. Um, and uh, I'll give you an example. Um, in, in Michigan, 43% uh, of the population cannot afford daily necessities, including food, rent, mortgage, healthcare, childcare. So these are the daily necessities in life. These are not luxury things. 43%. So 40% of the population make less than $15 an hour. We still have one third of our population uninsured or underinsured. So these are fundamentally big holes in any society. Any society cannot claim to be uh, for its people if we not responding to the needs in these areas. So, so I, I think as Muslim Americans, as Arab Americans, we need to add our voices to other voices that let's talk about domestic uh, policy issues. Let's talk about healthcare. Let's talk about living wages. Let's talk about clean environments. Uh, these are the issues that, unfortunately, our voices as Arab Americans and as Muslim Americans are not there. And, and, and uh, we, we really need to build on the experiences of uh, the NAC organizations, uh, Nahla and others, in terms of uh, 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 um, given a voice to the people that we serve, that we know that they are struggling and that they, we know that they are in need and, and make sure that their voices are added to the other voices that have been struggling for more fair and, and equitable society. So, so I, I think we, we need to talk about Arab American um, uh, domestic policy agenda that protect people. Excellent. Uh, Nahla, you want to add to that? Yes, well said, Hassan. <laughs> uh, the thing is, our slogan here at Access California Services, preserving dignity and enriching life. We are not- uh, Preserving dignity and where? The what? Say, say it again, I didn't hear the last part. Preserving Our dignity as preserving dignity, enriching life, enriching life, Excellent. enriching life, and every service that we provide to the to the community, it has to be done with dignity. Every person, we always tell the community, every person is born with dignity, and our job is to preserve it. We don't give dignity to people, and. Uh, and every person is entitled, even in our religion, in every religion, entitled to roof on top of their head, to eat healthy every day, and to have clothes to cover their naked, right? Every religion believes in that. And um, our organizations are leading the religious institute and been supporting social service because they know this is a necessity for every human being. And Salam, if you really would like to, with your campaign to support organization like Access California Services, Access in Michigan, and any other organizations that are providing social services, this is a very important in our religion. Right now, we need more clinicians to provide services in a culturally manner. And uh, I'm sure you remember the story started with Access California Services mm -hmm. because I needed some help in a culturally sensitive manner and it wasn't there for the community. And that's where I decided to start Access California Services. And uh, mashallah, now our community are going through uh, this education, whether it's mental health, social service, uh, public policies to speak on our behalf. 
and we are part of this society. We are one thread of the tapestry of uh, adding more services to our community. So what is needed right now, a, a collaboration with organizations like Impact and any other organizations to hire more uh, community members who are, uh, they went uh, through the credentials, they, are, they have the experience to provide services to the community. And the, we need to be um, equal to any other organization outside, especially when it comes to um, uh, compensations. So they can be able to work with us and not to leave us and work somewhere else. So this is very important for our community to pay attention because sometimes they say, you know what? We don't like to donate uh, funding for salaries, which salaries are the ones are providing the services. With one salary, we can help thousands of people. And uh, we need to uh, start, you know, educate the community. Salaries for um, uh, compensations for community members who are qualified, uh, uh, it's going to take a uh, great support from, uh, from the community. I wanted to ask one last question before we turn it back to Iman, who has questions from the audience. But it's a question about Ramadan. And people are bemoaning that, you know, we, we won't have the, the large iftars and the, the mass gatherings at the mosques. I, I actually look at it as a way of going back to what the essence of Ramadan is, which is self-introspection, learning how to gain faith through solitude and stillness. And so the idea of being in our homes, which actually is the way the prophet, uh, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, practiced it. He, he went home to do the uh, Salat al-Layl, which now we call Tarawih prayers. Tarawih means to, to find relief and relaxation. And sometimes I can't find it when there's a thousand people and the hustle and bustle and you have to talk and, and all that. And then you go to the iftars and after the 10th iftar, it's the same food. It's great food, but the same restaurants and the same food. And you, you, want, you want that respite. And I find that this year we're going to have that opportunity to find ourselves because at the end of the month of Ramadan, we need to transform ourselves to do exactly what Access is doing. And that is uh, preserving human dignity and enriching life. If we don't do that after Ramadan, then I feel that the whole Ramadan experience is a waste. And I just, I wanted your, uh, you know, your, 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 your response to that in terms of the stay-at-home mm -hmm. order. I know we won't have the galas, we won't have the, the big events in Ramadan, but do you see any benefit to that for our community? Uh, I can add to that. Um, I think this Ramadan is going to be a special Ramadan where every family member is going to be gathered every night on the same table with no other guests. So they can be able to talk freely. They can, um, uh, they can have a conversations that probably they never had before. And uh, I think Ramad this Ramadan is going to be bringing uh, families together closer and closer. And uh, many of uh, parents uh, who they used to miss Ramadan iftar with their children because of work, traveling. And I think this Ramadan, we're going to come out after this Ramadan with a lot of success stories, great stories from families children, youth, and uh, now even uh, I was uh, listening to the governor in, in uh, New York. He is so happy to have his both daughters in the house. So now they start talking about a lot of conversations they never had before. So I think this Ramadan is going to bring a great uh, information and we're going to learn a lot together. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I agree. Just let me uh, say that uh, 
I'm very proud of Muslim organizations and Muslim mosques here in the Michigan area. Uh, they, uh, from day one, uh, they've been uh, very solid in terms of supporting the, uh, uh, the guidelines issued by the governor, uh, staying home, suspended services, uh, adjusted to uh, the new reality. Uh, I think what uh, uh, Trump is saying regarding special treatment is absolutely uh, uh, divisive rhetoric and, and it's, it's distraction from what needs to be done um, and making sure that people are uh, united and, and, and together. Um, I agree with you, Salam and Nahla. Um, if, if, if there is any, any, um, any light out of this uh, darkness, it's the fact that Ramadan comes with the spirit of discipline and, and self-restraint. Uh, um, self uh, that uh, uh, really um, uh, testing the caliber of who we are and, and reflecting on where we want to be and where we go from here as a, as a human family. Thank you. You know, I've learned so much from both of you just in, in the past 20, 25 minutes. So I, I cherish this relationship and I, and I hope we can continue working together and let us know uh, what else we could do. But before we say goodbye, uh, Iman uh, is going to take it from here, and, and she has a few questions from the audience. Absolutely. So thank you again uh, so much for joining us. And, and we do have quite a few questions from the audience. So I've picked a few that I feel are, are very impactful. Um, and then we'll get right to it. So our first viewer is asking, in your work of the communities that you have seen hit worst by COVID-19, what are the demographics most impacted? I ask because in a recent report by the CDC, we found that communities of color have faced a much higher rate of fatality and financial burden than others. Would you agree that those who were already vulnerable are at a higher risk of being impacted by this pandemic? And do we need to be allocating greater resources to these communities in the upcoming future? Let me uh, say that uh, this is uh, this is absolutely right. That unfortunately, this crisis impacted uh, vulnerable communities in a much larger proportion than other communities, including immigrant communities. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, the cities of Dearborn and Dearborn Heights uh, are majority um, Arab American, Muslim American uh, populations. So, uh, in, in these cities, um, we have 900 people tested positive and we have 76 uh, died in Dearborn, uh, in addition to 32 in uh, Dearborn Heights. Um, in, in the Detroit area, African-American population is 14% of the state, um, uh, percentage of the state population. Uh, uh, but they uh, uh, have 40% the infection po tested positive. Uh, in, in the African American community, 40% and 40% and of unfortunately people who lost their lives. Why? Uh, I think uh, Salam mentioned in the beginning that the, the, uh, the uh, inequity in, in our society, the lack of uh, uh, support system, the lack of uh, uh, coverage, health coverage, the lack of jobs, the neglect that these communities and where minorities suffer in, in a dis disproportionate way uh, is showing us again um, 
the, the horrible results of inequity and the horrible results of built-in society where you have people protected and other people are not. Um, if, if you'd like to add to that, Nyla, please. Yeah. Uh, actually, we did see um, a hit uh, on the, the vulnerable uh, community the ethnic community, and especially the Asian community right now, because they think the virus came from China. There's a hate crime now, but uh, we have to educate the community. We're all in it together. And majority here in, in California, if you heard, um, majority of um, uh, the virus is spreading out in the uh, adult um, uh, community. Uh, which is the nursing home. Um, and the nursing home, majority of them are not the minority community. The minority community is the last thing that they think of putting their parents in a, in a, in a nursing home. And most of the cases here in California are increasing in nursing home. Uh, but they feel it's the anxiety they want to adopt that and they they feel like they are labeled um, of um, uh, carrying this together but we're uh, our job is to educate the community to say we're all in it together it's not only the minority it's not only the african-american community it's not the asian community we need to put a lot of education um, uh, in, in into the community that it's hitting everyone. You know, and we I want to be labeled. I, I absolutely uh, resonate with, with the words that both of you are saying. I, I always like to remind our viewers that we are the United States of America. You know, we are united in this in this uh, work together and, and Access has done a phenomenal job of, of, of being a champion in this effort. But, you know, a lot of us are thinking about the now. What is it that we can do to alleviate um, much of the suffering that people are feeling in the pandemic right now? But I'm curious to know, you know, what does our future look like? Organizations like yours, what programmings or initiatives do you think we, or you, or even we as a collective, um, need to take on to remedy the impact that this pandemic has had on, on the American people? Let me say um, two things uh, that come to mind immediately. One is that uh, uh, one is public policy. Um, the work that impact is doing. Uh, Salam talked about what um, uh, um, the need for us to be involved in uh, in raising the voices of Muslim Americans and Arab Americans. Uh, on the issues of health, issues of jobs, if, issues of education. Uh, I, 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 need, uh, I have to say that um, um, we need to do more in this area. We need to support each other. Uh, we need to be able eventually to uh, have a voice um, uh, regardless of our diversity and, and backgrounds, uh, we as Muslim Americans and Arab Americans come, can come to a common agenda when it comes to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, domestic policy issues. And we can do more and have more of support behind these issues. So let's talk about this. Let's start with ourselves talking about how can we do this? How can we come together and raise these issues to the level, to the, a level that, that reflect where we are as a community? And, and second, please support your local community-based organizations. Anything you could do uh, uh, these are extremely connected uh, organizations. These are trusted organizations. Uh, these are transparent organizations. Um, uh, and, and, and these are the foundations 
of building a presence for us in this country. And so we need their, we frankly get support from outside our community and almost nothing from our community. We need to understand that um, uh, uh, Nahla talked about uh, investing in the capacity, growing the capacity of these. Uh, from talent to uh, buildings to equipments to all of this. Uh, so I, I think we asked our community to support their local social service community-based organization who are trying to do work and provide for others. And also, um, um, uh, asked of them to be transparent and, and be able to um, uh, respond to community needs. So uh, I would say, uh, let's, let's reorder our, um, uh, uh, our priorities as a community and start investing in what needs to be done now. Um. I like to add to uh, this. I agree with Hassan, everything that you said, Hassan, you're amazing. And we really need to support organizations that they're providing services. And one message uh, from me to other organizations, maybe if we can only focus on our mission. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we confuse the community if impact starts doing uh, counseling or other uh, social services. Just stay focused about your mission and that will uh, make our community stronger when each one of us is uh, focusing of what's best for us to do. Because we start seeing organizations that the community got really excited and they wanna jump into everything that they wanna do. And um, especially when the refugee crisis in Syria happened and in Iraq, everybody wants to do social service. And sometimes we confuse the community with a lot of uh, um, anxiety of services. If we can only focus on what's good for us and what's good that we do for the community, because um, the young generation they're gonna start staying away from us when they see us jumping into everything. Uh, we admire uh, impact of what they're doing and how they are making the policy on our behalf when we jump into things that we need support. We always see organizations like Impact is ahead of us to do the support and uh, to make our um, uh, road easier when we ask for support from uh, the community. Uh, we really need to be together and support each other uh, to be more successful in the community and to get the trust from the community. And uh, I'll tell you, as much as we are a trusted uh, uh, voices in the community, in the past, you know, uh, we, we trust our community and we take the reward uh, good for it. Like yesterday, we had an amazing, amazing uh, uh, project. Uh, people, they come in the car and they say, we're three families. We give them food for three families. They see, they need to see us that we trust them as much as they trust us. Mm -hmm. We need to build that trust between each other and we need to build the trust between our organizations and each organization to focus on their missions. I'll tell you, Miss Nyla, you have no reason to worry on Impact's behalf. Salam keeps us busy enough with, with <laughs> our work that yeah. if, we, if we have the opportunity, we would love to continue working together. But, um, but you're I just, to, I just want to add that anyone, anyone that is being counseled by Impact needs to see a counselor. <laughs> so, but, but in all seriousness, uh, I think you both articulated it very, very well. Uh, I, I want to thank you for enriching us with your wealth of wisdom and direction. Uh, we will advocate for access. That, that is our priority right now in this time. And this is not something we do just as a, 
you know, we'll, you know, we'll give you a favor and we expect a favor. No, this is about our mission uh, to serve our society and in, and as, as in the words of, uh, of access of preserving human dignity, enriching uh, our lives of all Americans and putting people first. I'm gonna take those words and really make that the, the trademark of the human security campaign. I think that's so, so important. And I thank you for helping us gain clarity on that point. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Just to, just to echo Salam's sentiments, um, I want to thank um, you, Mr. Hassan and Ms. Naila, for, for such an informative session on, on community services. You know, we here at MPAC are determined to serving American Muslims and pushing for the proper protections and resources that our communities need. With that being said, our work is a very collective effort. It comes from you, viewers like you, young leaders, donors, activists, Muslim Americans who share their stories with us so that we can uplift you to our greatest capacity. As we continue to work closely with Congress with our human security campaign, we are now in a more unique position than ever to continue bringing forward impactful change. We ask you now just to contribute to our cause be it a contrib contribution in the form of a phone call or an email or a dollar or even an idea, it all helps. And it helps catalyze our vision for a more just and moral society. Um, so I wanna, I wanna continue uh, saying, you know, please reach out to us anytime you feel that you can be a part of our mission. We would love to have you uh, as, as allies. And please, please continue joining us for our webinars. Uh, next Wednesday, we will be hosting Saad Zarif, the Vice President of Wahid Invest, who will be speaking on the financial impact COVID has had. So I know I'll be bringing my pencil and paper on that one. So I encourage everybody, everybody to join. Um, for any more information on our webinars, as always, please please visit www.mpac.org forward slash webinars. Um, thank you again to all of our viewers for joining us and watching. Um, we here at MPAC wish each and every one of you a safe, secure, and fruitful Ramadan filled with spiritual elevation. Um, please keep our team in, in your duas as, as you are always in ours. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Ramadan Mubarak to everybody. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you very much. Thank you.